3.7 incline planes. This lesson is due for Monday, November 10th. Let's move on to the lesson. Um, let's first talk about incline planes and their associated forces. So there are four main forces associated with incline planes. We have gravitational forces, which always point straight downward, even though the incline is at an angle like this. It's always pointing vertically down no matter what, even though the incline is at an angle. All right. You also have parallel gravitational force, which is FG with the parallel lines. And that represents... Um, a green, this green arrow right here, it's pointing down the incline at the angle, always, like this. All right, because the parallel gravitational force just means the component of the gravitational force that's parallel to the incline. So it points down the incline as a parallel line at an angle, always like this or like this. It's always parallel to the incline and it always points down an angle. All right, because you, you can think gravitational force is pulling something down. So since it's parallel to the... Um, incline then it'll point downwards always uh, parallel to the incline and at an angle. The normal force always points at a 90 degree angle to the incline. The incline, let's notice, is at an angle. So Fn is not pointing straight, rather it's pointing at an angle so that it's going 90 degrees to the surface. Think of this as a horizontal. If you slightly tilt your head and this Fn is going at a 90 degree angle, so is this one. You slightly tilt your head and you see Fn is going at a 90 degree angle. All right. Finally, we have frictional force, which is FF, and that always opposes the direction of motion. And the reason why I put two stars behind opposed direction of motion is the direction of the friction changes depending on if an object slides down or is pulled up an incline. So let's see what that means. Let's say the object is allowed to slide down the incline like this. Let's say it's going down towards the bottom. If it's allowed to slide down the incline, then the force of friction is directed up the incline because it opposes the direction of motion downward. So it'll point this way because it's opposing or like stopping something from going down further. Right, on the other hand, if the object is pulled up with a force F that's in black here, the force of friction will be directed down the incline, which I've um, indicated with this star here for this purple FF. And that's because since the object is being pulled up the incline, the force of friction has to oppose that pulling motion by going down the incline at an angle like this. All right, so just remember force of friction always depends on which direction the motion is going. If, it's, if, it's, if the object is allowed to slide down, then the force of friction will be directed up. But if the um, object is pulled up, then the force of friction will be directed down. All right? But regardless of where the force of friction is directed, three things will always remain the same. The, um, the normal force will always be pointed um, at a 90 degree angle to the, to the plane like this, because it's at an angle. The FG parallel will always be pointing parallel to the surface uh, like this. And the FG, uh, the non, basically FG by itself will be always pointing down vertically no matter, because Gravity, no matter what, is always pointed straight down, straight south. There's no southwest or southeast, it's just straight down south. All right, now let's talk about the equations for the components of gravitational force. So these equations should be memorized because they actually are a little different from um, what you're used to seeing in your physics reference tables. All right, so I want you to memorize these two equations. For the perpendicular uh, component, we have Fg perpendicular written like this. For the parallel component of the gravitational force with Fg parallel written like this. All right, so let's go through one equation at a time. Fg parallel, or the parallel component of gravitational force that is parallel to the incline is Fg parallel is equal to Fg sine theta, which is also equal to mg sine theta because let's remember the gravitational force is equal to the weight and weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. All right, this is the y component of the resultant. Now we have Fg perpendicular, which is the perpendicular component of the, um, of the gravitational force that is perpendicular to the incline itself. So Fg perpendicular, you have to memorize, is equal to Fg cosine theta, which is also equal to mg cosine theta, because let's remember Fg is equal to m times your mass times acceleration due to gravity. And this is the x component of the resultant. And how you can understand this a little better and make this easier for yourself is, we see this picture, and you may not understand why this is the um, considered the x component while this is considered the y component, but we can see it a very different way. So let's do this. The angle is already an incline. It's not, perp it's, not, uh, it's not a flat line, so we got to flip it a little bit. So what I like to do is I like to do a 90 degree change and rotate the paper 90 degrees like so. So what I did with, with this image is I rotate 90 degrees like this, and what I realized is flipping the diagram 90 degrees, you see that the parallel is y and the perpendicular is x, and that's because 
FG is the resultant here you can think of. And you can see FG perpendicular is somewhat like the um, x-axis, if you look at it with your head tilted to the side. And FG uh, parallel is kind of pointing up like this, north-ish. And this is kind of pointing west-ish. So you can think of FG perpendicular as the um, x component, and that's why it's FG cosine theta or MG cosine theta, while FG parallel is kind of pointing north-ish, so it's fg sine theta or mg sine theta. All right, but if you don't want to get confused by this, an easier way to just remember this is just to memorize, memorize these two equations. fg parallel is equal to fg sine theta or mg sine theta, and fg perpendicular is equal to fg cosine theta or mg cosine theta. All right, so just memorize those two equations. Now let's talk about a graph of distance versus time for moving objects on inclined planes. Now the graph of distance versus time for moving objects on inclined planes um, shows that D versus T is, slow, is a curve sloping upward because the object is, ex, itself is accelerating as it moves down the incline. So you know that the distance is constantly changing uh, like crazy, and you know that V versus T is also changing. So therefore, you know that the accelerated motion means that D versus T has to be curving upward like this because the object is accelerating as it moves down the incline. These three graphs, if you remember, are for non-equilibrium situations. That is, acceleration is not equal to zero, net force is not equal to zero, and the uh, velocity is increasing. In other words, the speed is increasing, so there has to be a positive slope curving upwards for D versus T for accelerated motion. All right, so just remember, if you have a moving object on an inclined plane, you know it's accelerating, therefore, D versus T has to be curving upwards. That's how you know it's acceleration. Also, you'll note that V versus T is a positive slope upwards, and it's not constant, so you know it's accelerating. And A versus T is accelerating because it's not equal to zero. All right, now let's talk about mass-inclined planes and angles. Um, let's just note that mass does not relate to the angle of the inclined plane. Also, coefficients of friction do not relate to the angle of the inclined plane. Basically, to summarize this, both mass and coefficients of friction remain the same even if the angle of incline changes. And the reason for that is because, um, basically, uh, we don't care. Mass isn't affected by some angle. And coefficients of friction, we don't care because if, even if you change the angle, you're still going to have the same, su the same surface there. So obviously, neither the mass nor the coefficient will change even if the angle does. So angle doesn't affect mass or coefficients of friction. All right. Now let's talk about finding the angle between the, norm, uh, the normal force and the horizontal. As you know, the normal force always makes a 90 degree angle with the surface it's on. So this is the surface and Fn makes a 90 degree angle with it no matter what. All right, so that's why I drew a right angle here. And um, in order to find the angle x down here between the normal force and the horizontal, um, we need to use the following. We had to add up the angle of the incline, um, which is, for example, 35 degrees here. And we had to add up this 90 degree angle here because what we're trying to solve for is this mystery x value. All right. And we know that the sum of all the angles on a triangle is 180. So what you had to do is you had to add these two up to get the total sum of everything else but x. And you had to subtract these two from 180 to get the result um, x. Because you know 35 plus 90 plus x has to be equal to 180. So in order to solve for x, you got to do 35 plus 90 gives you 125 and, you, and from 180 you have to subtract 125 to find out what x is. And if you actually do this example, you'll find it's 55 degrees. Alright, so all you need to do is you have to add up the angle of the incline that's given to you and the 90 degree angle because the normal force makes a 90 degree angle with the, uh, with the surface. Alright, so angle of incline that they give you plus 90 degrees. Then you have to subtract the sum of this, these two, from 180 to get your mystery angle. So here, the um, angle of the incline is 35 degrees that they give you. The angle that the normal force makes with the surface is 90 degrees. And x, we don't know what it is. So we do 35 plus 90 to get the sum of these two, we get 125. And we just subtract the sum of these two from 180 to find what x is. And we find that x is equal to um, approximately 55 degrees because we do 180 minus the sum of these two, which is 125, gives us 55 degrees for x. So this is how we do it. A special problem pulling a block up an inclined plane. So let's say a block weighs 22 newtons, and it's on a ramp inclined at 32 degrees to the horizontal like this. And a 4.0 newton frictional force, FF, acts in the block as it is pulled up the ramp at a constant velocity with force F, which is parallel to the ramp as shown in the diagram below. So I know that this is really nauseating and there are so many things, but we're going to break this down now. 
even though fg parallel is not shown, we know for sure that it always points in the same direction as friction in this case because fg parallel is always pointed down and it adds to the friction. So together, fg parallel and ff oppose f because they're F is going up this way while FF and FG parallel are going down. So FG parallel and FF together are both pointing down, so they oppose F because they're going in opposite directions from F. All right, so we know that when they add up together, if it's at a constant velocity, it's equilibrium. So the overall resultant is zero because it's equilibrium and it's constant velocity. All right, so what we need to do is we need to solve for FG parallel added to FF and that will give us the magnitude of um, F, which is on the other side. All right, so let's find FG parallel. In order to find FG parallel, we have to do um, FG times sine theta. All right, if we plug in the FG parallel equals FG times sine theta, we know the uh, weight of the box is 22 newtons, and we know the angle of the incline is 32 degrees. So if we plug in, we get uh, 22.0 newtons for the weight times sine of the angle of the incline, which is 32 degrees as given, is equal to 11.66 newtons. All right, and the frictional force we know is 4.0 newtons. So all we have to do is find the, uh, you know, the uh, parallel component of the gravitational force, and we have to just add it to this frictional force to get the magnitude of F. So we know that the gravitational force which adds to this force of friction is 11.66. So we just add up 11.66 and 4.0 newtons, to get the magnitude of F, and that's because the magnitude of FF equals FG, uh, sorry, the magnitude of F equals the magnitude of FF plus FG parallel, because this opposes these two forces going down. Even though it's not shown, again, it points in the same direction as friction, so these two act together, and they oppose F. So we know, we know the magnitude of F equals the magnitude of FF plus FG parallel. So we know FF plus FG parallel, if we plug in, gives you 11.66 from here, for FG parallel plus 4.0 newtons for FF gives you 15.66. Since the two forces that are pulling down here together is 15.66, in order to establish equilibrium, we know that the magnitude of F has to be equal to 15.66 to balance it out. So therefore, the magnitude of F up here is 15.66. All right, now let's try a sample problem using what we know. All right, uh, number one, the diagram shows a 24 kilogram uh, block sliding down inclined plane. Uh, at an angle of 27 degrees with the horizontal and it says a what happens to the mass and the coefficient of friction as the angle of the incline is increased Remember the angle of incline doesn't affect mass or coefficient of friction because it doesn't affect what surface it's on uh, In terms of like how you know how much friction there is and it doesn't affect how much mass something has So neither the mass nor the coefficient of friction is affected by the angle of incline B says draw the angle of the forces acting on this block we know um, the normal force is always directed perpendicular and 90 degree angle to the surface it's on, so it's like this. Fn is perpendicular to the surface pointing up at an angle like this. Fg is always pointing down south no matter what, um, so it's like this. And since the um, direction of motion is down this way diagonally, we know FF is, a, is directed upwards diagonally to oppose it and balance it out. And let's just assume it's an equilibrium, all right? And it says, find the magnitude of the angle along with the direction of the normal force exerted by the hell in the box. In other words, it just says the angle of the normal force um, that it makes with the horizontal. That's just a fancy way of saying it. All right, so what we need to do is we need to um, add up 27 degrees, um, which is the angle of the incline that we're given, plus 90 degrees, to give us the other two angles um, other than the one we're trying to find. So we do 27 plus 90 gives us the um, angle of the incline plus the angle that the normal makes with the surface. So we get 27 plus 90 gives us 117. And we just subtract that from 180 to find the angle of the horizontal uh, with the normal force. So we do 180 minus 27 plus 90 or 180 minus 117 gives us 63 degrees. All right. And what's the component of the box's weight parallel to the incline? We know FG parallel, the, the formula is um, FG sine theta. Uh, for FG parallel, and we know mass is 24 kilograms. We're given that G is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. We know that theta is equal to 27 degrees Celsius. 27 degrees, sorry. And we multiply these three, we get 106.89 newtons. All right, same idea here. We can just solve it the way we did before, but you can just look at this on your own. And we know that this graph shows the motion of an accelerant object. That is, the object is not in equilibrium because it's curving up like this. And just remember, F 
uh, G parallel is in the same direction as this because it always points down. So the, that and friction opposes F. Please complete this on your own for November 10th. Thank you very much.